Good evening from New York. When it comes to escalating the U.S. troop presence in Iraq, that President Bush would ignore the opposition of the new Democratic Congress was to be expected. But that he would also ignore the opposition of his only significant ally in the conflict, far more troubling. Our fifth story on the countdown, it appears the more people who reject the president's plan to send thousands more troops to Iraq, the more determined he is to see that plan through. The British prime minister, we've learned, having registered his objections before Christmas. Perhaps he, like everyone else, according to the American president, just needs to have the situation in Iraq explained to him. Mr. Bush describing himself as the educator-in-chief over the weekend. After the decider-in-chief last year, it is his first interview since last week's address to the nation, as with his failed plans for Social Security reform and with the Medicare prescription drug plan that nobody seemed to understand, the president telling the CBS News magazine 60 Minutes that those who criticize him on Iraq simply do not understand what he is trying to do. That would make it unanimous. Educated dissent, apparently not even a possibility. In Wednesday's speech, the president mentioning that mistakes had been made in Iraq. Mr. Bush asked by correspondent Scott Pelley to elaborate on exactly what those mistakes were. Abu Ghraib was a mistake. Using bad language like, you know, uh, bring them on was a mistake. I think history is going to look back and see a lot of uh, ways we could have done things better. No question about it. The uh, troop levels. Sir. Could have been a mistake. We're I, not. Could have been a mistake. Yeah. While not exactly a mistake, Mr. Bush conceding that the execution of Saddam Hussein could have been handled differently. Did you see the video of Saddam Hussein's? I saw some of it. Execution. Yeah. What did you think when you saw that? I, I thought it was discouraging. You know, obviously they could have handled this thing a lot better. I, 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 it's important that that chapter of Iraqi history be closed. They could have handled it a lot better. Despite the mistakes and the estimated 655,000 additional civilians who have died in Iraq since the 2003 invasion, 655,000 more than would have otherwise died had the invasion not occurred per Saddam's usual rate, Mr. Bush still of the opinion that the Iraqi people owe him a massive thank you. I think I'm proud of the efforts we did. Uh, we liberated that country from a tyrant. Uh, I think the Iraqi people owe the, the American people a huge debt of gratitude. Here at home, Mr. Bush under fire from all sides for his decision to send those extra 21,500 troops to Iraq. And nevertheless, the president seeing his resolve as anything but stubbornness. Do I agree that I'm stubborn or do I agree that people think I'm stubborn? People think you do. What do you think? I think I'm a flexible, open-minded person. I really do. Thus, it is apparently not stubbornness that had Mr. Bush declaring in that interview that the new Democratic Congress cannot stop the so-called surge. And it was, by the way, bad cop, bad cop. Vice President Cheney also taking aim at the legislative branch over the weekend. Congress obviously has to support the effort through the power of the purse. So they've got a role to play, and uh, we certainly recognize that. But you also, you, you cannot run a war by committee. You know, the, the um, Constitution is very clear that the president is, in fact, uh, under uh, Article 2, the commander-in-chief. Both of those interviews with the president and vice president coming too soon to obtain the reaction of either to today's lead story in the New York Times, which reported that already there are serious questions over who's really in charge in the war zone under Mr. Bush's new plan, the Iraqis or the Americans. The first wave of U.S. reinforcements crossing the border into Iraq today from Kuwait. General Casey having said that American forces will remain under American command, period. U.S. military commanders on the ground, however, fearful that Iraqi commanders with hidden loyalties will, in effect, be leading Americans to pick sectarian targets. Iraq's national security advisor today fueling those fears, saying that Iraq will not dismantle the main Shiite militia, the Mahdi Army. President Bush's former ambassador to the United Nations on British television today calling the civil war in Iraq what it is, a civil war. Look, the fundamental point is whether the uh, civil war that exists now is going to continue or whether the Iraqis are going to decide to live together in one country. That has not been and is not now a question fundamentally for the United States to answer. Mr. Bolton now eligible to join us here at NBC News. Time